Hey, this is Safevavi from thekinref.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're gonna learn a fingerstyle arrangement of Misty, the beautiful jazz standard. This terrific fingerstyle arrangement was made by Stan Ayers and it was made famous by Cheryl Grice Watterson right here on YouTube. After you learn this, go check her version out. She's an amazing classical guitar player. You should go listen to her. But first, I'm gonna play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual and I'm gonna walk you through it note by note, chord by chord, finger position by finger position. So first, it goes like this. Enjoy. Okay, so are you ready to begin? If this is your first jazz guitar arrangement, then you might be a little intimidated by the amount of chords, but don't worry, I'm gonna try to alleviate some of the mystery behind some of these chords. Uh, maybe all of them, we'll see how well I can explain them. Uh, I'm gonna try my best. So first, you put on this chord. Okay, this is simply A flat add nine. Okay, it's as if you've taken an F chord up to F, G, A, you've taken it back one fret and it's A flat. So just add your pinky on the sixth fret of the E string and you get A flat at nine. Now from the E string to the fourth string to the D string, it's six, four, five, six. Okay, fret one. Six, four, five, six, A flat at nine. Okay, so you pick it, then you bar the third fret, okay? And you can either already put your fingers on or you can pick the E string on three and then add these two fingers, the pinky on six on the A string and the third finger on the fifth fret of the D string and you get an E flat major 7 and you pick strings 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, now if you notice this is the same exact shape as a C major 7. It's a C chord without the first finger. It's C major 7 is the same shape only with a bar on the third fret. We've taken this chord up three frets. 
okay? So far, you see, no mystery. It's just simple chords. So, once you understand the chords, everything becomes a bit simpler. Uh, even if you didn't know the shape before. So we have this. Third fret. E flat major seven. Now we play a little lick. We've, uh, we, we can keep the bar on and we play frets three and five on the third string. Okay, on the G string. And then we play this. which is going to be B flat minor 9 okay and E flat 13 okay which both have kind of the same shape um, with a different bass note so you see complex names same shape um, okay so you see there's nothing to fear okay we're moving along so you bar the sixth fret and you put your pinky on the 8th fret of the E string, okay? And you play this first. You play strings 2, 3, and 6, okay? You can also add the 4th uh, the fourth, uh, the fourth string to it, okay? Or you can pick strings 3, 4, and 6, and then when you need to pick the E string on 8, you can harmonize it with the second string on six, and then you get this. Okay, and then you can harmonize both notes. Okay, this is an octave. It's this is the line, so you can harmonize them both like this. Okay, or you can play strings two, three, and four inside the chord, and then add the E string, okay? It's up to you. So it was this. And then you play this little lick, okay? Just 8 and 6 on the E string. Don't uh, let go of the bar, okay? Now you can harmonize this as well, okay? If you want. And then you put your pinky back on 8, and this time you play the same shape, only this time your bass is on the A string on 6, which is an E flat bass note. So this turns it into E flat 13. Okay? And you pick strings 1, 2, 3, and 5. And then you let go of the pinky and you play the 6th fret of the E string. So what we had here is this, okay, which is B flat minor 9, and then 8 and 6, and then E flat 13, and 6 again, the B flat note again. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Then you put your uh, pinky and third finger um, on the eighth fret of the second and third strings, and you play that in sequence. Okay, now because the next note we need is five on the G string, I like to slide into it. Okay, but you don't have to, you can do this. Okay, I like to slide. So we have eight on the second string, eight on the third string, and then five on the third string. Okay, now you have a choice. Um, you can put on this chord, or you can still use your third finger here and put on the same chord with the thumb. Okay, we're playing finger style, so the thumb is an option. Okay, we're not strictly classical here, um, so if you're comfortable with, you, with using your thumb, use your thumb for the next chord. It's a bit easier to, um, to transition into the chord. Okay, now this chord is simply A flat major 7. 
okay? It looks like A minor on the fifth fret, meaning that it's five, five, and four uh, on the fourth, fifth, and, uh, or the fourth, third, and second strings, uh, respectively, with A flat on the bass, okay? So, it's this. Now, why is this shape? Because if this is A flat, and we take, uh, we take the A flat note from 6 to 5 on the D string, then we get this, okay? And this note, it's, uh, it's an E flat note. It's still inside the chord, okay? So that's kind of the jazz version of an A flat major seven note, okay? Just picking out the specific notes you want to ring out, okay? So we've had this, okay? And we put on an A minor shape on the fifth fret, okay? So it, uh, on the second, third, and fourth strings, it's four, five, and five, okay? And we add the thumb on four on the E bass, making this an A flat bass, A flat major seven, okay? I hope I haven't confused you, but I promised to explain the chords. So, to the best of my ability. This is A flat major seven. So, we play this. Okay, it's just an arpeggio of the chords. So after we've played this note, um, this note, five on the third string, we just play an arpeggio. So it's this. Okay, so we just play strings six, four, three, two, three, four. Okay, just down and up, or up and down musically. Okay, and then we play this, which is A flat six. Okay, um, it, the bass is still on four, but this time it's with your second finger. You put your first finger on three on the fourth string. Okay, and you put your pinky or your third finger, but I find the pinky more comfortable for this shape the pinky on five on the third string so we have this okay five on the g string three on the d string four on the e bass okay it's a flat six and then there's this okay now I did this on purpose and not this because we're gonna need to bar in a second so we just prepare the finger for a bar that's a small trick but I'm gonna show you how to do it after we played the previous lick which we haven't yet learned okay which is this now we played this a flat six play the uh, the F note three on the D string again and then you arpeggiate an A flat major seven in this shape okay remember if this was A flat it's the first chord we've played in this video um, if this was A flat then to turn it into A flat major seven we just have to take this note from A flat to G so it's this shape now from the first string down, it's uh, one, uh, one is the first finger, but it's uh, fretwise, it's three, four, five, and six, okay? Just diagonally down the guitar. So that's what you play. You play this, you play the F note, and then you play from the fourth string down. Okay, down physically. It's really difficult to, um, to stay consecutive when you try to explain how to play. Okay, so when I say up, sometimes I mean physically, sometimes I mean... <laughs> I'm, I'm always pointing at the direction, okay? So if I mean physically, I'm gonna point down. If I say up, 
I will specify that it's within the chord. Okay, talking about music is sometimes difficult. Um, it's just like chord names. You can call a chord by as many names as the note it contains. Okay, so there's no end to confusion when you're talking about music. So try to use your ears and try to listen to what's going on because your ears are the best indication of what's going on. Okay, the ears are the most important thing. So, saying that, uh, having said that, I'm going to return to this. Okay, but you want it to sound kind of like a solo. So try to finger each string um, differently, okay, um, in a different time. Okay, try to time your fingering. Okay, so it won't sound like this. Okay, because this is a melody part and not a harmony part. Okay, it's important. So play this. Okay, try to make it sound uh, like a solo. Okay, or put it on and then take each finger off after you play that. Okay? Okay, practice it. Okay, until you can get it just right. So, we've had um we've had this so far. Okay? Okay, this wasn't too successful. Okay, and then we have this. Okay, which is the same thing we did here with the bar on six. It's the same thing. Okay. The same chord change, only this time it's, it's on four. Okay. So you play, um, you play a flat minor nine. Okay, so... Bar on four, pinky on six on the E string, and you play strings one, two, three, and six. And then you take the pinky off and you do six, four. Okay? Then you put the pinky back on and you play the same chord, only this time with the A string as your bass string. So it's D flat 13. Okay? And then you take the pinky off again and you play four on the E string. So you get this. Okay? Basically, the same movement, only a tone down. So let's go over it from the top and see how it goes and feel how good it is to, um, to understand what you're listening to. Okay? Because when you see something played for the first time and you don't understand what's being played you might be a little intimidated as you were in the beginning of the video and now you're gonna understand what I'm playing so you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable with this so check it out and see the chords A flat add 9 bar on 3 E flat major 7 okay now you can fill the bar E flat 13, A flat major 7, A flat 6, A flat major 7 again, this time in a melody, then bar 4, and you have A flat minor 9, then we have D flat 13. Okay? Um, now, again, you can fill in the bars if you don't want to, uh, to leave it empty. For example, um, okay, you can add notes. I'm just showing you the main harmony and melody notes. You can make your own arrangement and it's not only that you can, I think you must. Okay, try to make your own arrangement, try to own every little thing you play. If you learn a lick, 
try to play with it, try to improvise with it. If you learn a chord, again, try to improvise with it, try to change it a little, try to see how it sounds in different picking patterns, okay? Always play with what you play, okay? It's important, you develop your musical hearing that way. Don't ever play something exactly as it's written um, without trying to make your own arrangement, okay? Because the world doesn't need another guitar player, but the world does need more musicians, okay? That's my credo. Uh, anyway, so we're here. Okay, it's just four and six on the B string. And then you put on E flat major seven again. And you play the chord strings uh, one, two, three, and five. And then is this. Um, Okay, three, four, and six on the E string. Now you can play it like this. Okay, play the chord again and then add um, four and six on the E string. So it's... Okay, in any way you like. Um, so the first variation was this. The second variation was this. The third variation was this. Okay, I played the bass again, then I played a block chord, and then I added four and six. Okay, you see, there are many ways you can play each single lick. Okay, try to make your own arrangement. Try to play what you hear. Okay, um, so we play this. And then you play F minor 7. Now, thanks to the notes we're picking here, you only need to bar the first fret and add your pinky on 4 on the B string and play this. Okay? Which is strings 2, 3, 4, and 6. Okay? It's F minor 7. Um... Now, if you don't recognize this shape, then if this is F minor and this is F minor 7 without the pinky, you can also add an octave above the 7 and play a high 7 as well on 4 on the B string. Okay? So you have... Okay? But this shape um, is too cluttered for a jazz chord, so you just pick out the notes and play this. Okay? Okay, strings two, three, four, and six. Okay, so um, it all comes together like this. And then one and three on the E string. And then another shape of F minor seven. Okay, now what is this weird shape here? It's actually very simple. Again, it all depends on how you look at it. Now, when you put your fingers like this, you don't recognize if you're a beginner with complex chords, I mean. Um, if you were a beginner, a complete beginner, you weren't watching this. So, this weird shape, if you look at the fingers, you might not recognize this little shape. Okay, D minor 7. It's a chord you've probably played before. So if you do this and you add your finger on the zero fret, okay, on the nut, then you take it up, you get this shape, okay? So it's F because this is F and this is F minor and this is F minor seven, okay? It's the same shape as a D minor seven, okay? So, again, don't be intimidated by chord shapes. Um, F minor 7. So, from the first fret up. Told you I'm going to point. Um, 4, 4, 5 with your pinky. And 3 with your first finger. Now, 4 and 4, you play with your two middle fingers. Uh... Three, two, pinky, first finger. Okay? 
finger wise. So you have four, four, three, uh, four, four, five, three. Okay? You try calling out numbers, okay? It's difficult because we have fret numbers, we have string numbers, and we have finger numbers. So it's not as easy to teach as you think uh, to call out chord names and chord shapes. So now that we've understood this, let's connect this with the previous line. Um, Okay, so we play the chords, uh, the notes, we play the entire chord. And then we play strings 3 and 2. Okay. So we have... Added one more bass there. Okay, you can add a bass. You can not add a bass. And then we have this, okay, which is B flat seven. It's uh, six on the E string, six again on the D string, and seven on the G string. Okay, this is uh, jazz seventh chord shape. Very simple. I just like to use the pinky because. I don't know, I'm used to it. You can play it with the third finger, doesn't matter. And then you play frets 8 and 10 on the G string. Okay, so you have this. And we're finished with the first part. Now the first part has two different endings. So before we learn the first ending, and then the second ending, and then the second part. Uh, let's play the first part again from the top up to the first ending. so far. Congratulations. If you got here, then you're doing a really, really good job. Um, so we have this. Okay, so now the first ending is this. Okay, so we play this which is a bar on the 8th fret, okay? It's d we're gonna play a D flat diminished chord that tr turns into a C7 chord, okay? I'm gonna explain the logic in a second, but first let's put on the fingers. So bar the 8th fret, put your 2nd finger on the bass, on the E bass, on 9, Okay, D flat, and put your third finger on nine on the G string. Okay, and what you play is strings two, three, four, and six. Okay, so this is this is D uh, D flat diminished. Now, why are we playing it like this instead of like this? Or this okay why if you paid attention you, you saw that I took the bass note off and turned the bass note from D flat to C and by making this little change the chord changed into C7 okay it's C7 okay but if you only play strings two, three, four, and six, you get this, which is what you get when you play this. Okay? So that's the logic behind this little movement here. So 
you play the chord and you have an entire bar to fill so fill it in any way you like okay you can arpeggiate it you can pick a different picking pattern okay or it doesn't matter which uh, which way you want to pick it as long as you fill it your way then you take the finger off we have C7 and again pick it in any way you like so we have and then we just play another form of F minor 7 just here it's a bar on the eighth fret a minor seven shaped okay if this is a minor just take the uh, third finger off open g string then take this up to the eighth fret okay and i like to play strings two three four and five because these are the strings we've played so far um and that creates a voice leading you can add the e string if you want but my choice is to keep playing strings two, three, and four as my harmony. Okay, so. And then we'll play this. Remember the A flat six we played? Just take it up two frets to B flat six. Okay, it's six on the E string, five on the D string. 7 on the G string okay now this time it is important to play this with the pinky on the G string because you need your third finger for 6 on the E string okay while the chord is ringing okay you can add it later and then you go back to the E uh, flat major 7 and you play okay the E string and then the rest of the chord we're back to the top only uh, we don't play the A flat add 9 chord we just play the B flat chord on the top of it uh, and this time it's not on A flat it's on B flat itself so we just play Okay, so it all comes together like this. Okay, I played the E string to show you how it sounds on the F minor 7. Okay, so that's the first ending. The first ending is this. back to the top first ending okay second ending is this okay what a beautiful line this is um, the second ending okay you get to the B flat 7 play 8 and 10 on the G string and then you put on this chord okay which is E flat 6 okay now look at what one change can make you've already played these notes okay the A minor shape here on 5 only you have played it with the A flat bass and it was A flat major 7 now if you play the same shape with pinky on the E flat bass on six on the A string, then you get E flat six. Okay, one small change, completely different chord. Just like this. 
Okay, this is a diminished chord. This is a uh, seventh chord. Okay, now what is this shape? It's very simple. It's again the C shape with its sixth note. Okay, two on the uh, on the G string. This is C six. So we just take it up to E flat. Okay, the bass is on six. And uh, if we want to go uh, fret by fret, then from the second string to the fourth uh, to the fifth string, it's four, five, five, six. Okay, it's a sixth chord. It's an E flat sixth. So we have. Um, We can again pick it any way you want, and then we play this G minor six. Okay, um, not, it's not G minor six. I was thinking of how we explain this, and I wanted to say that it looks like a G seven uh, jazz chord, only with the bass up one fret to four. Okay, um, it's A flat minor six. So it's uh, four on the E bass, three on the D string, and four again on the G string. So we have four, three, four. Okay, it's G, um, G. It's a G. We can call it G7 over A flat, okay? Technically, we can, but it's A flat minor 6. And then use your pinky, um, and you can slide up to the 6th fret, and you play this, okay? Which is 6, 4 on the E string, now bar strings 1 and 2 when you play 4 because then you have to play 4 and 6 on the B string. Okay, so it's... And then the same E flat we've already played before. Okay? Um, bar on 3, pinky and 3rd finger on the bass. Okay, and we play strings 1, 2, 3 and 5. And again, we can um, we can fill the bar in any way we like. So it's a flat six, not uh, minor six. Why do I keep getting confused with this chord? A flat minor six, E flat major seven. Okay. Now before we play and learn the second part, let's play this uh, the first part with the second ending remember we finished the first ending on B flat 6 Minor six solo E flat major seven. Then the second part begins, and you play this. Okay, and you have a bar and a half of E flat major seven before that, so it's um. gonna play it again later so don't worry if you haven't or just rewind the video and watch it again uh, it's a video after all so the melody the first melody line of the B part goes like this okay it's just four six and eight on the B string and you can play it in 
several different ways. You can slide into the eight. You can slide into the six. You can slide into both of them. Okay, and then six and eight on the E string. So, and then it's B flat minor with a high uh, D flat note. So you bar the sixth fret yet again, and you put your pinky on the E string on nine this time. Okay, and you play strings one, two, three, and six. Now, what? Why is the D flat note there? Because it's inside the B flat minor chord anyway only this only if you play it like this then the D flat uh, note is on the G string so we're playing an octave of it okay because that's the melody note so okay and then you can play uh, several notes a couple of more notes to fill the bar or not okay now um, you play the D flat note, the high D flat note, nine on the E string twice more. So you have this. And then the B flat minor chord turns into an E flat sort of chord again. So it's just the bar uh, down one fret physically. So your bass is now on the A string again. So um, you keep your pinky on the ninth fret, and this time it's just um, it's just E flat nine, uh, kind of an E flat at nine chord. Um, so to accentuate the fact that it's an E flat chord and not still a B flat minor chord over E flat, because if you play this twice. It doesn't really sound like a chord change, it sounds like a bass change. So what you do here, uh, that's the genius of Stan Iyer's arrangement, is that you add, uh, you add you add the 5, you add your 3rd finger on the D string on 8, and you play the entire chord. Okay, and then the ear recognizes this, the 1 and the 5, and recognizes the fact that we've changed a chord. Okay, music is, there's a lot of psychology that goes into musical arrangements uh, and compositions. So, okay, play the entire chord. And then uh, you have a bar to fill. So, I like to end on the bass and then I do this. Okay, that's kind of my small change to Stan Iyer's arrangement. I, I've already forgotten what's in the original arrangement, but they're very, very close together, okay? Uh, but I've played this uh, like this so far, so um, this little line is my arrangement of his arrangement. Uh, no disrespect intended. Um, it's okay so it's this um, it's just a B flat diminished chord here um, with the bass on the D string on 8 so you have 8 9 8 9 or from the E string uh, up physically down musically it's nine eight nine eight okay so you play it as a block okay just a really short note and then 11 on the E string with your pinky and then take the pinky to 12 and put on another diminished chord the same shape now it's a D flat diminished chord okay so you have and then 11 again on the E string, and then this. Okay, it's um, it's nine nine eight eight. Okay. Now this is kind of a it's kind of a six nine chord. 
Okay? It's this shape if you take it uh, down one string. Okay, it's kind of a very prominent jazz chord solo sound. So I added it here. Now you don't have to, you can do this. Okay, just 11 and 9. But if you want to add this chord, just add it. So it's 9, 9, 8, 8. So. Okay, and then it's this. Okay, you can play it like this. Okay, and take the, f the third finger off of the uh, B string, but. I find it a bit uncomfortable and a bit cluttered, so I like to do a double bar at first and play this, which is again A flat major 7, only this time it's D major 7 shaped, because if this is D, then this is D major 7, okay, we just take this up to the 8th fret, bar the 6th fret, okay? Okay, so you can do it <coughs> either with these three fingers or bar, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the eighth fret on strings one, two, and three, and still have the bar on the sixth fret, waiting for the next small change in the chord because we're gonna move from A flat major seven to A flat six. Okay, so the change is gonna be on the B string from the eighth fret to the sixth fret. So you play this first. Okay, again, you can add a couple of more notes or just play this. Okay, so it's this, and then you play eight twice more on the E string, and then you take uh, you take everything off if you're doing this, uh, if you're doing this, and just put on uh, everything except. You put on the same notes again, except for the B string. So now the B string is the barring finger, which is six. So it's eight, six, eight, six now. Okay, instead of eight, 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 six. Okay, so if you're playing it like this, the cluttered version, just take your third finger off. So it's. Mm. It's really uncomfortable for me. Sorry, um, so, okay, got it, a seventh, a major, a major seven to a six, okay, the seventh note to the sixth note of the chord, so we have, okay, okay, there's another way, haven't thought of it, you can uh, take both. Uh, second and third fingers off and put the third finger instead of the second finger on the G string and you can okay, change it like this okay um, so either one of the three options or works okay the fingering options you play what you find comfortable so uh, what we've had <coughs> so what we've had so far is this Now again you have the bar to fill Okay and then you have this which is the same A flat major 7 you've played like this only this time you need well you don't need you can bar the fourth fret and add two fingers on the fifth fret on the G and D strings okay and it's the same chord actually you could play it like this before don't know why I haven't thought of it it's probably because I've already gotten used to playing it like this haven't thought of it sorry but we're still learning this so if you want you can do this at the beginning um, um, okay and play this with a bar 
Okay, so again, you have three options. You can either play it with all of your fingers, with the thumb, or with the bar on four. Okay, now let's go back to the B part. Bar on four, five and five on the G and D strings. You play strings two, three, four, and six. <clears throat> With your pinky, you play. You let the chord ring. With your pinky, you play six on the B string, then four on the E string with the bar. Pinky on six on the E string, then eight on the E string. Okay, with the pinky. So, okay, you can play the chord again. Okay with four on the E string, okay? And you begin by playing the bass. So you play the bass and then the chord. So it all sounds like this. Okay? Now a very, very, very cool um, voicing uh, of two chords. A very, very cool uh, call. A very, very cool voice leading. Uh, it's this. Okay. You just change a bass note and move one finger back one fret, and it turns from A sus four to D add nine. So you do this. Open A string with pinky on 10 on the E string, first finger on 8 on the B string, 9 on the G string with your second finger. Okay, so you have 10, 8, 9. Okay? Got it? Why is this uh, a sus4? It's actually a7 sus4 because uh, if you take the D shape uh, up to the ninth fret, then it's a7. And if you take the note, the D flat note to D, 10 on the E string, then you get a sus4. So it's a7 sus4. So you play the chord then the 10 uh, on the E string, the D note, twice more. Then you take the first finger back from the 8th fret to the 7th fret and you play this chord with the D bass. Okay? And we get a D add 9 chord. Okay? So... Um, Let's not get into why this is a D add 9 chord, okay? If, if this is D add 9, then this is the add 9 chord, and this is within the D chord, okay? It's this note, and this is a D note, so it's D add 9, okay? I said I don't want to get too much into theory, but this is D add 9, so it was A7 sus4. This is one of the coolest voice leading, uh, voice leading licks I've ever encountered. And it's pure gold. It's the reason you play finger style. Okay? To come across this sort of voice leading. And I might be a little exaggerating here, but um, I'm really not. It's very... Um, in when you play a lot of finger style you kind of expect certain fingerings and certain chords and after you've played finger style for almost 20 years there's little that can surprise you and sometimes you come across this which is just genius it's kind of leading voices on a piano it's piano voicings so it's terrific Okay, and then you um, you keep your pinky on the 10th fret and you put on a C7 chord, the same C7 we played at 
the first ending of the first part, remember, of the A part. Um, it's a bar on eight and a finger on nine on the G string and you play this. Okay, so this time it's uh, kind of a dominant nine chord. Okay, because you play the bass and then you play strings one, two, three, and four. Okay, you need the fourth string for the seven. Okay, four down. Okay, because otherwise it's just C add nine. Okay, but if you add this note, if you add the B flat note, then it's seven. It's, uh, it's a dominant nine chord. And then you take your pinky off and play the bar, the, a, the, eighth, uh, the eighth fret. Okay, so... And then you play this. Um, excuse me. Okay, this little lick. It's this. Which is, um, it's an augmented chord. Okay, so let's call this E flat augmented, even though I'm not 100% sure that it's E flat augmented, but it's an augmented chord. It's 13 on the E string, 14 on the G string, and 13 on the D string. Okay, so you have 13, thir uh, 14, and 13. Okay, no B string. So. And then this, okay, now can you guess this, the chord name, okay, we've played this shape twice before, um, it's F, uh, it's F9, okay, we've played this on uh, E flat 9, we've played it on D flat 9, and now it's F9, okay, and again, we take the pinky off, just like we did on here, so bar on eight, your bass note is the A string, pinky on ten on the E string, play strings one, two, three, and five. Take the pinky off, play eight on the E string, then play yet another diminished chord, only this time it's a half diminished chord, it's a minor seven flat five chord, and it's G minor 7 flat 5 or G half diminished any way you want to call it okay so it's uh, its bass note is on uh, on 10 on the A string so you have uh, 10 11 20 10 11 or from the second string to the fourth string uh, 11 10 11 10 okay this shape if it's on strings 2 to 4 Five, um, two to five, not two to four. If it's on strings two to five, then it's a half diminished chord. If it's on strings one to four, then it's a full diminished chord. Okay, so this is a G, uh, G, um, a G minor seven flat five, G half diminished. Okay, so this lick. have the bar the rest of the bar to fill okay before we play the ending let's play the entire um, the entire B part yeah let's play the entire B part B minor E flat 9 the diminished chord and uh, run and then the 6 9 chord and then um, and then it's a flat major 7 to a flat 6 okay now it's a flat major 7 again then this beautiful lick okay, this beautiful harmony which is a 7 sus 4 
then C um, C seven nine or C dominant nine augmented chord F nine G minor seven flat five. Okay, so I'm gonna play it again without talking. flat 13 it's not c flat because a there's no such thing as c flat um and b because it's c flat 13 it has a flat 13 note this is c 13 this is c flat 13 okay flat um but you bar it instead of playing it like this okay you bar it because you need to take the flat 13 note off, okay? So it's, it's this. You bar the 8th fret again. This time you add two fingers. You add, uh, you add a finger on um, 9 and 9 on the 2nd and 3rd strings, on the B and G strings, okay? So... This is the chord. You play strings two, three, four, and six. Okay, four and six are on eight, and two and three are on nine. Okay, so got it. And then you take the finger off of the B string and play uh, the barring finger and play eight on the B string. So it's okay. It's this. And then you can either play uh, the F minor 7 again to B flat 6 or you can do what the arrangement requires you to do and play this okay which is A flat 6 over E flat okay and then B flat six. Now, what is A flat six over E flat? It's very, very simple. Once you don't look at the fingers and look at the shape, okay? It's not the same thing. If you look at the fingers, you say, "Hey, I've never put my fingers like this before." But if you look at the shape, you'll see that you probably have because it's E, okay? Six. Okay, you just add, if you play E and you add your pinky on 2 on the B string, it's E6, so you just take it up to the 6th fret, and it's A flat 6. But you play the E flat bass, so it's A flat 6 over E flat. Okay, it's A flat, A flat 6 over E flat okay that's all that it is okay and then you play the same ending as the ending of the first ending of the A part okay you play the B flat 6 then the high B flat note and you begin again okay or end on the E flat major 7 so the second end uh, the second ending the ending of the B part was this okay it's uh, C um, C flat 13 to C 7 then a flat 6 over E flat B flat 6 
and then start over again or finish on E flat major seven. Now, before you go, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons already up and I make a new one every couple of days or so, or at least I try. Go to the website, download the tab, it's for free, just like all of the lessons on this channel. And if you wanna give something back and uh, help me produce more of these lessons, of these free lessons, then there's a donation button and feel free to donate whatever you want, whatever you can. I'd be very, very grateful for any donation whatsoever. The donations keep Lick and Ref going and help me free up more time to make these lessons. So um, I thank you in advance for any donation you choose to make. Go get this under your fingers, learn this slowly, practice it, have patience, play, uh, play around with it, make your own version of it, and just have fun. This is a beautiful song, and if you don't know the song itself, go have a listen, search for Misty, and listen to the song with lyrics. The lyrics are as beautiful as the harmony. Okay, it's a bit kitsch, but there's nothing wrong when kitsch is that good. Now go play this, have fun, go get this under your fingers, let me know how it goes, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching.